So I guess my first question, well, first of all, welcome everyone to pretentious film majors uh, from Drexel University. Uh, I'm sitting here with Zach. Yes, Zach Shevich. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm Mitch Hurwitz, and we're going to find out what he thinks makes Mitch Hurwitz tick. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, you start, however no, you want to start. I mean, that's better than what I was going to come up with. Welcome to this Pretentious Film Majors interview. I'm Zach Shevich with the acclaimed creator of Arrested Development, Mitch Hurwitz. That, well, now I'm acclaimed. Yes. <laughs> I've just been acclaimed. Just recently acclaimed. <laughs> yeah, just moments ago. Uh, I feel like it's strange that your name has that preceding thing of creator of Arrested Development. Uh, it's very surprising. You know, in, in L.A., in Hollywood, people put the... They put the names uh, the name of the show in the middle, so it'll say Mitch Arrested Development Hurwitz. And I started my career for a long time as Mitch Golden Girls Hurwitz, right. which really aged me prematurely. And kind of throws a gender question in the mix. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's really more to the point, isn't it? <laughs> well, uh, talking about earlier in your career, I was actually curious uh, if there were any movies or television early on, maybe before you got started, that really influenced you and made an impact on you. I grew up... Um, in the era of home improvement, if you know that show, no, I didn't. I'm I'm far too old for that. Uh, but it was a biggie. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, I um, I I've not thought about that in a while. I was a big Monty Python guy. Um, I discovered Albert Brooks early on. Um, he had a, a movie called Real Life. Have you seen Real Life? Have you guys seen Real Life? It's worth seeing. And when I first saw it, I didn't know. It was really a mockumentary. It was one of the first of those. And, um, and I didn't know it was a mockumentary, so I, it, was, it worked on every level. Um, he starts off talking to this crowd of people and ends up singing to them. And I just the whole thing just blew me away. And I, I think I always responded to things that kind of broke the norm a little bit it just not that it was better or worse it just that's what always kind of excited me so how early on was it that you actually thought i can make television or i want to be a writer I, I would say it was like maybe four in the afternoon today what time is it now uh, four thirty. <laughs> yeah so not long yeah. um no i um i was gonna go to law school and um and, and then when I, I went to Georgetown, which was kind of a liberal arts school, and I, and I wanted to drop out and, well, not drop out, but I wanted to transfer to NYU to learn, you know, to go to film school. And I didn't do that because um, I kind of wasn't sure that it was what I wanted to do. But then when I finally talked to my, my father was going through his midlife crisis exactly when I was going through my pre-life crisis. So I remember saying to him very trepidatiously, I, I don't think I... I I want to go into law. And he said, oh, I wouldn't go into this fucking business. I mean, it's such a nightmare. You just fight all the time. I said, really? Because I was thinking of writing. You should write. <laughs> like, he just, he just given up. So I was lucky. Can we can we speak like that on uh, YouTube? Probably not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm really going to unload some. <laughs> I'm going to come out with some heavy stuff. I can't even say shit. I have to say stuff. <laughs> I, I backed off it. <laughs> uh, so you got encouragement then from your father. I did. Um I got encouragement, but I also had a, a, a father that was kind of results-oriented. Um, I'm going to speak freely about him only because I don't think he knows what YouTube is. I think we're okay. Yeah, we're in safe territory. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be safe. Um, and he, um, I remember I got a job as a runner on the Golden Girls, um, and I remember I was with him somewhere, and he said, oh, okay, so if this woman comes up and talks to us, you're a writer on the Golden Girls. Why? Well, I, I was saying you were a writer on the Golden Girls. I said, well, Dad, I've been in L.A. for two weeks. You know, and he said, well, uh, you'll be a writer on the Golden I'm not worried about that. But the problem is, she said, you're kidding. I was, a, I was a talent agent for 30 years. I've never heard of anybody making it so quickly. So you really got to sell yeah. that you're just a phenom. So it was kind of uh, the expectations were already there to be met. And I've spent a lot of time in my life trying not to meet expectations, trying to be really aware of, you know, how... how um, how much that can kind of inhibit creativity. Uh, you mentioned that job on the Go Golden Girls. Was that your first industry job? Um, yeah, it was. Um, it was literally an industry job because I was I was in charge of um, stamping out the um, the molds for the Sophia character. Because the last three years, I don't know if you know that, but she was a total robot, it was complete. And I would do, and so I got to work the um, face stamping machine. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's great. That was such a fun face to stamp. 
you have no idea. No, it was my first. I I I went out there and I started as a runner, and uh, which means as a gopher in any other field. And I remember thinking, you know, a line that's now well known, but I remember thinking there's been a huge mistake. I don't think they they want me to get coffee for them. I, you know, why, why don't they just get their own coffee and then just make me rich and famous? Uh, and it did take a little humility to kind of learn, like, no, 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 this is... What you're really doing with those jobs, you're doing a couple things. You're trying to find out what you don't want to do for a living. I think that's really important if, in case anybody here goes out there and does that. That's a big part of it is seeing, you know, really seeing what those people are like that do those jobs and, and sort of that's helpful. Um, and the other thing you're doing is you're kind of jumping ahead in line. Because it, a lot of it comes down to who's online first, and uh, like I got my scripts read by the people who were in charge of the shows on that on that studio a lot because they knew me, not because they were the best scripts, right. you know. So that, so it it has advantages, but I, and then I went from there and I became like a development executive for a while, which was really a drag. Did that, what, how did that experience inform your creative I, career? It was, um, it, you know, a lot of people talk about like. I can write better than these bad scripts. A lot of people have that experience. The, the trick is that you don't want to write better than the bad scripts. But, it, it, but sometimes it does motivate you to kind of see the level of work that's out there that's in any field that's, that's just minimal, and it kind of encourages you like that you have a chance. So it did. I remember early on, one of my jobs was if you, they wanted me to go through the stack of scripts and just give them my general thoughts on all of them. And I was just kind of young and competitive, and I just trashed all of these scripts really vigorously. You know, can't write women, and I don't know why they think this passes for dialogue. And I turned it in, and one of the assistants there said to me, oh, you, you can't turn, these are the friends of the people who run the studio. I mean, they've all worked here. And then I sneak in and just completely sell out on day one. Shows great promise from <laughs> can't write to save their life. But it, but it was it. It also, writing is like a very unnatural thing to sit down and force yourself to do. So you do try to find ways that you can motivate yourself. Sometimes it's working around other people, working with other people, or even just competing with what else is out there. So it's kind of a combination of that for me. So uh, you mentioned you were a fan of those mockumentary Albert Brooks films. Yeah, so this is one, right? Yeah, we're yeah because i right <laughs> this is all scripted right exactly uh is that your line did i take your line oh sorry, sorry. okay anyway uh so you mentioned you're a fan of these mockumentaries i'm up i'm sorry uh well when did the ideas then start percolating for arrested development well it's funny you know um like a lot of people who are starting out um as opposed to now where i'm i feel like i'm ending up uh i you kind of start off maybe writing about your own family I don't know if you've had that experience yourself. Um, and I did a show that was about my own family, and it just about tore my family apart. It really was interesting how, pe how like, people don't, it's almost like having a caricature artist come over and telling everybody, hey, a portrait artist is coming over. And people just go berserk, you know? So um, it was challenging. And then this next show was Arrested Development, and I remember thinking, okay, now it's time to create something. You know, I, I used a lot of things that were in my life and my, my family's life and my wife's family's life, but, but it was much more of a, a creation that I used all sorts of tricks. I used everything I had, yeah. you know? I, I feel like sometimes uh, I, it's become the hallmark of my style, but it's all born of desperation. I just, you know, I would just pack as much in every place I could get a joke. I would try to get a joke right. on that show. 